the Tureza Hav Synagogue is the oldest synagogue in Ukraine. It was built in the Jewish quarter of Lviv inside the city walls, on the street known, at least since 1383, as the Jewish Street. The synagogue was erected in 1582 as a private place of worship for the family of Yitzhak ben Nachman, or Isaac Nachmanovich, a community leader and one of the wealthiest merchants in Poland. It stood in the midst of his property and was open to the general public only during prayers. The synagogue was reconstructed by Yitzhak's sons, Mordechai and Nachman, in 1595 after their father's death. That same year it became public and remained the main synagogue inside the city walls until 1801. The synagogue was confiscated by the Jesuits and formally became a church in 1606. However, the new owners could not access the building since it stood inside private property. In the spring of 1609, as a result of an exhaustive suit, the synagogue was restored to the Nachmanovich family. A Jewish legend ascribed this victory to Nachman's wife, Rosa, who allegedly delivered all of her money to the bishop, whose demands were not limited to monetary compensation. Miraculously, her sudden death saved her from his abuse. In honor of this righteous woman, the synagogue received its folk name, the Gilden Rose, the Golden Rose. The famous rabbi, David Ben Shmuel Halevi Segal, called Taz, after his main work, to raise Zahav, served as the rabbi of Lviv and its vicinity between 1654 and 1667. He composed the Song of Deliverance, Shir Geula, for the Shabbat following Purim, dedicated to the restitution of the Nachmanovich Synagogue in 1609. This Thanksgiving prayer compared the salvation of the synagogue to the liberation from the Egyptian and Babylonian captivities. To honor this rabbi, the new name of the synagogue became Tureza Hav, or Taz. The fame of the author of the Taz was never overshadowed by his successors, including such celebrated rabbis as Chacham Tzvi, Yaakov Orenstein, and Chaim Rappaport. From the late 19th century, the history of the Jewish community in Lviv, its settlement area and sacred places, aroused the interest of historians. The Tureza Hav Synagogue as a legendary, historic, and picturesque place attracted many artists who perpetuated its image in their work between 1890 and 1935. For example, Rudolf Berndt, Alfred Kamienobrodsky, Franciszek Kowowyshyn, Odo Dobrowolski, Maria Gutkowska Richlewska, Zygmunt Birer, Józefa Kratochwila Widimska. However, starting from about 1905, photography better served to document the site. It showed the interior of the prayer hall, and its vestibule, and its exterior mainly the intimate courtyard of the synagogue, recording the changes which occurred in the mid-1930s. A unique series of photographs was taken by the architect Janusz Witwicki in 1941 to 1942. He documented the demolition of the synagogue by the Nazis, step by step. The synagogue as a monument drew the attention of architectural scholars and students from the late 19th century. It was measured and rendered several times and the drawings were published, not only the structure, but also the ritual objects, furniture, and fixtures. Most of these objects were purchased after 1664, when the synagogue was plundered in a brutal pogrom. Although the location of many of these items within the synagogue space is unknown, one object can still be found in situ today. The architectural historian Alfred Grote used the information on the Taz in his research on the typology of Central European synagogues. Whereas the Polish architect and scholar Jan Sas Zubszycki tried to utilize some features of this monument in his search for an indigenous Polish architecture, Janusz Widwicki undertook an unprecedented reconstruction of the Lviv walled city as it was in the 18th century. Indeed, theoretical reconstruction of the Taz synagogue, undertaken in 1943 and based on archival and field research, included a part of Vidvitsky's project. Other far-reaching research was conducted by Maria and Kazimierz Priachotka and resulted in an exemplary publication in 1999 which gives a meticulous graphic presentation of the synagogue and reconstruction of particular stages in its history.
Recently, the ruins of the synagogue were thoroughly documented on behalf of the Center for Jewish Art. It was measured, photographed, and described. Although the structure stands abandoned for more than 60 years after its destruction, the accumulated knowledge enabled a faithful reconstruction of the main building stages of the synagogue. It was built in 1581 to 1582 on a plot purchased by Yitzhak Nachmanovich in 1580. At that time, a burnt mill and a brothel stood there. The owner obtained a building permit for the synagogue from King Stefan and the city council, but failed to get the consent of the clergy. He hired Paolo the Lucky, alias Pavel Schenschlivir, an Italian architect who came to Lviv from Shamut in Switzerland. At its initial stage, the synagogue comprised the prayer hall with a low extension on the west. The hall was lit by eight pointed windows, two on each side. It was crowned by an attic wall, the remnants of which are seen in old photos and drawings. The low western extension, now of unknown shape, included a lobby and two additional chambers where a shkolnik or a synagogue sexton lived. In 1594, Yitzhak Nachmanovich obtained a further permit to build a vestibule and a women's gallery above it. However, he died a year later and his plans were realized by his two sons, Mordechai and Nachman. They commissioned this work, as well as the building of the family's house along the street, to the same architect Paolo, aided by Ambrogio Simon Weberne Nut Klaus, alias Ambrogi Pshikhilni, Adam Pokora, and Master Zachariash most probably Zachariah Spravne, the guild nickname of Zachariah de Lugano. They disassembled the western extension and instead built a vestibule. This room also became the place for the rabbinical court, which relocated immediately from the old communal synagogue. The western wall of the prayer hall was cut through with three wide openings for better connection with the vestibule. The floor was paved with stone slabs. A new annex was added on the southern side of the building. It housed a Jewish prison on the ground level and a women's gallery above it. Thus the women's gallery was installed in the west and south of the prayer hall. Latticed windows were opened from this gallery to the hall. The entrance to the gallery was through an exterior open staircase, as demanded by the city council. The new extensions were covered with a roof, which did not exceed the sills of the large windows of the prayer hall to let the daylight in. The shape of the roofs of the prayer hall and western extension is unknown, but it stands to reason that they were of a sawtooth type. In the 18th century, these were replaced by lean-to roofs, facilitating the drainage of rainfall and removal of snow, but blocking the sunlight in the west. To let some light into the windows of the prayer hall, the roof of the western extension was supplied with a large dormer. In addition, a new low extension under a gabled roof was built, preceding the vestibule. The new extension was built to commemorate the place of prayer of the author of Sefer Turei Zahav, Rabbi David Halevi, as suggested by an inscription in the gable. This was the place of prayer of the Taz. The small courtyard in front of the entrance to this extension was surrounded by a wall, and wedding ceremonies took place there. The worshippers passed through the Nachmanovich house, the men entering the small courtyard and the Taz extension, finally reaching the synagogue vestibule. The women climbed the stairs, which were encased in the 18th century by a masonry shell. Below the staircase, another entrance led to the prison and the southern annex. Later, these spaces became storage rooms. At the beginning of the 20th century, the physical state of the synagogue declined, and the need for its reconstruction became urgent. From 1915 to 1919, the two piers at the entrance to the prayer hall were reinforced by the licensed masons Wojciech Jablonski and Aloysi Traversa. Subsequently, the vaults of the vestibule were reconstructed and electric lighting was installed. In the mid-1930s, the Taz prayer place was demolished as well as the fence surrounding its small courtyard. In 1934, the synagogue was enlisted as a protected landmark specified as a characteristic type of Renaissance architecture. As such, the synagogue met the disaster of the Second World War. A computer simulation enables us to see its monumental composition, the western and southern extensions, the plain surfaces of the walls, crowned by an attic aimed to protect the building from fire and assault. 
pairs of pointed windows on each wall of the prayer hall were placed high above the ground to prevent distraction of the worshippers and to hamper the access of unwelcome guests. A walk-through should start from the main entrance to the synagogue, as it was in the 18th century. Entering from the vestibule, one sees an overwhelmingly elaborate interior, with seating along its perimeter, the central bima with its metal grill of the 18th century, the stone-cut Renaissance Aron Kodesh in the east, a reader's desk and two stone trays for candles in front of it, the tablets of the law and paintings of the late 19th century. The northern wall remained unchanged since the 1580s. In the western and southern walls one sees openings of the women's gallery of 1595. A ribbed cloister vault spans the hall. The vault's shape consists of two intersecting barrel vaults, cut with pointed lunettes above the windows. It is a Gothic rib construction with five keystones and eight corbels. It is possible that this archaic Gothic construction, as well as the pointed windows, were the choice of the client, Yitzhak Nachmanovich, inspired by the renowned old synagogue of Krakow, the Polish capital, built in the 15th century. Architect Paolo, known for his late Renaissance church of San Laurent and Jovkva, managed to adjust his design to his client's varied tastes, as was the case in Jovkva, where the city patron, Stanislav Zulkevsky, followed the taste of the Italian-educated King Stefan Batori and Chancellor Jan Zamoyski. Unlike the Gothic survival vault and windows, the attic wall of the Taz synagogue was a fashionable element of late Renaissance and Mannerist vocabulary. It was used, for instance, by one of the synagogue architects, Master Ambrogio, in the castle of Stare Sello near Lviv, built in 1584 to 1589. This attic element was introduced to the synagogue architecture of Poland by Mateo Gucci, who reconstructed the old synagogue in Krakow in 1570. Such an element was specified in building permits for the synagogue of Przemysl in 1592 and that of the Krakowskie suburb of Lviv in 1624, subsequently becoming popular throughout the country. This attic wall was designed mainly for fire protection, but also as an element of fortification. Thus, the Taz Synagogue became the first example of a Gothic survival hall synagogue in the eastern lands of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. This style was followed in the synagogues of Medzibic, Staro Konstantiniev, Pithaitsi, Ternopil, Izyaslav, Satanev, and Husyatin. Of these synagogues, Taz was the smallest, lit by eight windows and spanned with a rib vault which could have been built only in a masonry center such as Lviv. The other synagogues were spanned with simple barrel vaults or with a wooden joisted ceiling. Unlike the Taz, most of these large communal synagogues had twelve windows, probably as a result of theological and aesthetic considerations. A cloister vault with lunettes above the windows was known in synagogue architecture before the Taz. It appeared in the High Synagogue of Prague, built in 1568, in late Renaissance forms. This design and style were applied with some alterations in the Polish synagogues of Zamosch, Szebrzeszyn, and Sokal, featuring two window fenestration and a spherized cloister vault. Compared to the late Gothic and Renaissance synagogues, the Taz remains unique among the synagogues in the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. It is the only representative of a Gothic structure with two window fenestration in its four walls, a rib vault, alongside a stone Renaissance Aron Kodesh and a Mannerist attic wall. This unique monument of architecture and history, a site of Jewish memory and a landmark in the old city of Lviv, protected by UNESCO, today stands abandoned and serves as a meeting place for marginal sectors of the population. The growing understanding of its value has not as yet borne fruits and does not protect it from further decay and vandalism.